do you feel about being on film all the time? Yeah. She says I'm terrible. I'm very camera shy. I did. I yeah. did that one too. I'm too. always like. She's like I, she pulls it, especially when I'm trying to say you know, I have a rope in my teeth. And I'm doing a maneuver. They're like, just so you could do it. And she's there with the camera. I'm like. Mm. Our friend on Adventures just yeah, gave yeah, us a pair of free glasses, yeah, which yeah, is pretty yeah, cool yeah, in the right prescription. Not our room, there's another. Anchored in La Paz, we invited neighbors over for dinner. Jeff and Brenda from Sailing Vessel Adventure hooked Robbie up with a new pair of used glasses. Giant bag of glasses, and this is just a small kind of amount of yeah, what you have. Yeah, this is just close to his prescription. We just brought what was we knew was close. So we got about 2,500 pairs on the boat. Jeff and Brenda have been traveling down the coast on adventure, providing folks in need with free used glasses. Seeing as we showed up in La Paz with only a bit of change in our pockets, we were pretty much in need. Oh, I like those. There were some pretty good looking glasses in the bunch, but in the end, he had to go with the ones that fit his prescription most closely. That's so right, it kind of bothers me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they're right, they're right. You should... Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Jeff, for bringing <laughs> Robinson the gift of yep. sight, I guess. The Absolutely. Oh, oh, the curry powder? The curry yeah, powder. thank you for the curry. So we pull up in La Paz, and then our neighbors end up being a boat we've been following online. Sea Shepherd. Sam Simon. <laughs> the Sea Shepherd crew was wrapping up a campaign here in the Sea of Cortez and taking a day off, but one of them was kind enough to summarize their work to us and to show us around the impressive boat. Basically what we do is, is enforce uh, laws that are supposed to protect the oceans. So, so we focus on the oceans, we want to protect the ecosystem and the animals, and uh, usually there are laws for it. In, in most countries around the world, you have laws, you have protected areas, and so on. Mm -hmm. So, the problem is that there's no enforcement. So, we come as a law enforcement uh, organization, basically. The Sam Simon arrived in Mexico, in Mexican waters, mid December, and we spent five months up around the San Felipe area, in the top part of the Gulf of California, to protect the Vaquita Marina which is a very small species of dolphin that is nearing extinction. So we're just trying to, to save the last few of them. We've seen a lot of dolphin. Oh, I've, yeah, I've yes. been wondering about it every time we see a dolphin, uh, but mostly we've been seeing like long nose. Yeah, you can't, so. you can't mistake them. I think they're like, they, they move very slowly and they're, they're very small dolphins. And yeah. just like pop up like this. Almost like a harbor <laughs> porpoise or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just even smaller. More on our purpose. Yeah, very very shy. So I know like most sightings have been done from sailboats at anchor or drifting. There, there was two parts in the campaign. One part was monitoring the, uh, the activity uh, in the Vaquita Refuge and around the Vaquita Refuge. For that it was using the radar and using uh, the drones, either normal drones or night vision drones. And um, so we can see what, what going on because there's also legal fishing happening so we can't just you know assume that everyone's illegal so once we have confirmation that it's illegal activity we uh, report everything to the authorities and then um, we ourselves can't do anything we're not allowed to arrest them or, or chase them or do anything like that but uh, if, if the authorities don't come and the panga leaves then we go behind and retrieve the gear because usually they leave the net behind so we have the position and we go and we have a, a little hook that we mm. drag behind the ship and, uh, and we go in that position and, and catch a net, retrieve it and confiscate it. And then all these nets are being recycled, uh, yeah, destroyed and recycled. That's and San Felipe here. Yeah. Yeah. That blue polygon here is the Vaquita Refuge. Yeah, and then all, all this area is a gill net exclusion zone, so they can't use any yeah, gill net, especially the Toto Abanet. And all these little black things, all these waypoints are nets or long lines we found. So okay. we recovered like 120 something wow. nets. Oh. We pulled them out, and if there were still animals alive, we would free them, otherwise, uh, well, they're dead. Yeah. What are people fishing there like? Same Toto Totoaba, and then there's a corvina season in February. It's uh, normally for the corvina, 
Exactly. They only put the net exactly. in the water for like half an hour. Well, yeah, come back with some regulations, just not to impact the vaquita, mm. not catch like accidentally a vaquita. But like there's been they've been documenting a lot of a uh, lot of issue with that where people pretending to be fishing Corvina were in fact going for Totoaba okay. and other kind of stuff. So. Sea Shepherd's crew run on a completely vegan diet. On our boat, we don't have a fridge. We don't have any other protein than beans, yeah. and we we pack our rice and we we fish. Yeah. So I'm very interested in kind of what you guys are eating here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing because even like a campaign like Antarctica, where we're at sea for I don't know, 70 days or, or 80 days. Um, somehow they manage to stock enough food. The cold rooms are filled all the way to the ceiling when we leave for a campaign like that. And yeah. uh, they freeze. Yeah, the freezer so is got, important. Uh, got a few freezers around too, so they, they usually like get extra veggies, chop them, cook them, and, and freeze them. So they yeah. pull them out when it's uh, getting low on fresh food. And there are some veggies like you know, like pumpkin and other kind yeah. of stuff. They last are, forever. Like cabbage. Yeah. yeah. Cabbage lasts forever in the fridge. Do you happen to, do you know what you eat every day? Like do you get a menu or? It's different every day. The setup reminded me of some tree planting camps I've lived in. The galley and the mess hall being the integral parts of the ship. What do you think, Robbie? Are you gonna try and join the crew? Are you gonna make the application? Yeah, well surely. You're vegan vegan cooking if you want to try and make an application for vegan. chef. You could do it? I could do it, yeah. What would you're, you're fishing a lot on the boat? There's a good galley for the for that. Yeah, the right. what would you cook? What would yeah. be the what's your first Indian food? Like <laughs> Indian, <laughs> food. Indian food. Indian food Indian is good. Uh, Indian food is good. That's why I have it. A little yeah. bit bigger than our boat. <laughs> a little bit. You've got you got we've got a little bit of living room on this boat. Memorabilia lines the hallways of the Sam Simon. She was originally a Japanese research vessel, now repurposed for the task of chasing down poachers. On the dry dock, right when the ship was bought, before it had its super cool paint job. Stickers with English translations of all the original Japanese words are meticulously placed all over the ship. Later on, we also took a walk to the Whale Museum, where the captain of the Sam Simon gave a public presentation about their work in the sea this year. We learned that the museum itself runs a similar program to the Sea Shepherds, patrolling the protected marine areas for illegal fishing practices. At the Whale Museum, which you can't really miss because of the giant whale bones out front, we purchased our National Park Passes, which include all of Mexico's marine protected areas. We enjoyed a last luxury of city life and took off for the islands. Mm. Really nice. Espiritu Santo and Isla Partida are half a day's travel from La Paz. Very easy to get to. At Bahia Partida, we found a fishing camp on the sandbar between the two islands. There were mostly remains of triggerfish and pufferfish there, a sign of what you might find in the water. As a person who comes from the land of evergreens and deciduous trees, cacti are a real novel kind of flora for me.
Lizards are a novel kind of fauna. saw signs of many other creatures and plants in the sandy rock as well, but luckily picked up only a few pieces of plastic on the shoreline. This is the mammal. What do you think it is? Like a... Small dolphin. Dolphin. This is probably the, the backbone of a very, very big marlin. It's been in the water a long time too. We were on the go, making our way just around the corner to Bahia Ensenada Grande. Potatoes and eggs cooked in the GoSun solar cooker are a staple food for us here in Mexico. There was some sea life clinging to the sandy rock faces in Ensenada Grande. We also bumped into our friends on Adventurer again, who gave us a tow in their dinghy around the bay. We joined them in the crew of Sailboat Ripple on shore at the tourist camp to catch a sight of a ring-tailed cat that evening. Jeff had the right idea about placing the GoPro next to the cookies that we left out to get this little creature out from his hiding spot. No, it would be funnier if he if he stole it. <laughs> oh, he looks like a cat. Can't wait to see how the footage turned out. Oh, you guys lay biscuits out? He took both of them and left. Oh, there's one left. You could have shot a century, man. Thank you.